Hi guys, this is Nia and today I will be painting belly button flowers. I love these flowers, they're so cute and round and super simple to paint. They're literally just a ball shape with a stem and that's pretty much it. For the stems though, I do try to make them long and bendy to add a little bit of interest to the painting. I also try to overlap them in terms of composition to make them look naturally placed. And I think if we only paint the flowers itself, it might become a little bit boring, so I decided to also place them in a clear bottle and to draw these out. I like to start with a line and then roughly draw around that line and you can vary the bottle shape and the neck as you would like. Feel free to get creative and make interesting shapes with the bottles. To paint these flowers, it's super simple. I either just make a tight round scribble first and then paint dot strokes around the scribble to give a little bit of the texture to the flower or you can also just straight away paint dots until you create a full circle with the desired size. As for the stem, you can make it a bit bendy or jagged. To make them bendy, you can draw more of a fluid line or if you want to make them a bit jagged, you can either add tiny cut branches on the sides or create separated lines slightly in different angles so it doesn't look as fluid. So this is how I paint them like how I drew them out before. I'm scribbling a tight circular motion then dotting the side to create the texture of the flower and I'm just going to paint these using my Pentel paints because I haven't used them for a while and the colors are super simple. I just used yellow and purple so obviously for the base I used yellow by itself and I tried to also leave out some white negative space as usual so it doesn't look like a silhouette and while the yellow is still wet I mixed a bit of purple to the yellow to create a muted orange color and I just do a dotting motion around the sides to give it a bit of volume and make it look like a ball instead of just a flat circle so you can try to paint them using the two different methods and see which one you prefer I'm going to first draw the bottle with pencil first, but if you're comfortable with painting it straight on paper, you can also do that. I'm just not very good at drawing bottles because I find it hard to get the right proportions in mirror image, but if you don't have the same problem as me, you can go right in with paint. Once I'm done with the bottle drawing, I'm going to mix my colors. Here I'm using my tiniest brush, it's a size 0 Windsor & Newton because I'm drawing them quite small and I want the textures to be very fine. I'm just going to use the yellow here and paint as I painted them before. And I'm going to paint all of the yellow flowers first before drawing out the stem. And when the paint is still slightly damp, I mix some purple to the yellow and use a dotting motion again to paint the textures along one side to create the volume and additional textures on the sides. And I'm just going to repeat the shape scattered around on top of the bottle. Don't forget to also alternate the positions of height and overlap some of the flowers to make a nice and flowy composition and it's really up to you how many you want to paint. If you are painting a larger image than what I am painting, feel free to also use a bigger brush but when you do so, make sure that the paint load on your brush isn't too heavy so when you do create the dotted textures, the paint won't flow out too fast creating huge puddles. Here, as you can tell, I'm alternating the way of painting this either by making the scribble first in the middle or just fully dotting the whole area. I find that the dots gives probably a little bit better texture, but it does take longer to do. So just pick the way that you like to do or you can alternate between the two ways of painting it like I am and just Keep on repeating it until you're happy with the amount of flowers you have on top of the bottle. When you do paint them overlapping each other though, I like to leave a small white line in between the two flowers to separate them. If not, I feel like they blend together too much and it looks a bit too bulky. Here I felt like the darker yellow isn't vibrant enough so I'm going to build up the contrast by using a thicker consistency of the same mixture but with slight more purple to darken it and I'm going to paint using the same dotting textures on top of the flowers. For the green of the stem you can 
use any color but I find that a muted green color works really nice and complements the yellow well. You can mix any of the greens that you already have but for me personally I just use a little bit of yellow and sky blue to first make a green color then I mixed it with a little bit of black and purple to mute the color but remember that that's just my preference. I like mixing colors so I can change up the ratio but you can use any greens that you already have on your palette. Here I personally want the flower to look like it's slightly drying which is why I opt for a green that is probably much closer to a brown but if you want the stems to look nice and fresh you can make the colors less muted and probably more like a light green color. For this time I didn't really know whether I wanted to make it thick or thin in the beginning and I made the mistake of painting it thickly before thinking about it but after drying it out thinner I decided that I like the delicate stems better so just be mindful on the weight of the stroke and maybe try it on a scrap piece of paper first to decide which look you prefer. I also want to make the stems slightly bendy and I find that it works well with this composition to make it lighter and more flowy and I'm just going to stop painting the stem right on top of the bottle because I find that there's usually a slight distortion when the stems are seen through a glass so they don't have to completely connect with each other. Next I'm going to move on to painting the clear bottle. For the bottle I used a very light consistency of black mixed with some blue to give it more of a bluish grey color and I'm going to first outline it very lightly and I've decided to also paint a tiny bit of water in the bottle so I'm going to add a slight oval and the level of the water depends on where you want it to be. I want mine to look slightly dry so I just want a little bit of water and I'm going to color it with a very light consistency of the gray. Then I added a thicker consistency of the black so it turns more like a darker gray tone and use that to paint some lines as reflection on the water as well as on the glass bottle. I'm not too sure how to explain this part specifically I basically painted lines following the curvature of the bottle to enhance the volume of it so hopefully you guys can understand what I'm doing from the video. Once I'm done with the jar, I added a thicker consistency of the stem color on a thinner part of the stem just so it gives a slight 3D illusion and the stem doesn't look as thick as I initially painted it but if yours is already really thin, you can skip this part. Then I also added tiny branches on the stem. This again is of course optional. I just thought that the painting looked a little bit plain and a little bit more texture would make it more interesting but this is totally out of preference. I find that the branches does cut a little bit of that flowy feel though so in the end you can really decide what sort of painting you're looking for. Then once I'm done with that I decided to continue the stem through the bottle but again I stopped where the water line is because I also want to create a slight distortion there where the line isn't fully connecting. At the bottom I also increased the thickness of the stem because I feel like the bottle or the water will either magnify or reduce the thickness of the stem slightly. At the bottom of the stem near the water I also added the less muted green then below that where the stems are cut off I'm going to add darker muted green again so it doesn't look too flat.
I decided to also add specks of yellow so the flower looks like it's slowly trickling down and I feel like this gives a nice movement to the whole painting. Then lastly, I added shadows below the bottle. Here I also redefined some of the lines of the jar just to define the outline a little bit more to separate it from the background. And this is also time where you can add additional reflections and define the lines that you painted before if it dried a little bit lighter than expected. At the end though, I did find that the page was looking a little bit too empty, so I decided to add background to it. However, I think it looks quite cute just as is too, so if you wish to finish here, you can also do that. But for the background, I'm just going to keep it very simple. I'm just going to use the grey color from before and I first draw out a line which will act as the surface of the table and then I separate that with the background with a darker gradation from the bottom to a lighter grey at the top. I started with a wet consistency just so I can spread the grey color and as I spread it upwards I finish off with a little bit of dry brush effect just to give it a little bit more character. Then to finish off, I make sure to neaten out the edges and as for the table, I'm going to make it a very very light grey colour to separate it from the frame of the whole painting and I'm going to also finish off by adding a little bit more of the custard shadow from the bottle. And that's pretty much it. This is the finished version of the painting. Before I go though, I just want to announce that I have a new Skillshare class out. This time it's on another True Beginners class where I'll cover the basics of watercolor brush control for round brush because I feel like it's the go-to brush that all starters should have. The class is filled with exercises which you can download and paint along and repeat whenever you need to as either practice or warm up. I've also included two easy flower paintings at the end of the class so you can apply the techniques learned in the class to a project. If you're interested in this class but you've never been a member of Skillshare, I will leave my link in the description box for two months free membership. So that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see you again in the next video and maybe even on Skillshare. Bye!